بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Quranic Arabic webinars. This lesson is the places of origination of the Arabic alphabet. Objectives To understand where each letter originates from, also known as the Makharij of the Arabic letters. We will understand why it is important to know the originating places of the Arabic letters. We will study this topic in more detail after we have learned about Fatha and Sukun. So at the moment we're only doing a very brief introduction. Later on we're going to study this Makharij in a lot more detail. Why we will study the Makharij? In every language the correct pronunciation of letters can be taught by understanding how the tongue, throat and mouth are used in the pronunciation of the letters. So this is important. Most languages when you're really trying to understand how to pronounce properly you have to go into the detail. By correctly understanding the exact mechanics of how the sounds are produced you have a better chance of pronouncing the Arabic letters accurately. Again if you're not Arab like myself you will not be able to pronounce them 100% but you should be able to get close to the pronunciation. Some languages have the same sort of pronunciation as Arabic but require a slight change in the pronunciation to get it right in Arabic. This requires the understanding of the origination point of each letter. So some languages like the one spoken in Pakistan have the same sort of alphabets but they pronounce some letters slightly different or even totally different depending on where the sound originates. It could be even to where they put their tongue when they try to say the letter. So by learning how this works in Arabic you can slightly adjust your pronunciation to fit in with the Arabic pronunciation. So where can sounds originate from? So this is high level. The first place is the throat i.e your air passage known as al halq we can divide this into the bottom of the throat the middle of the throat and the very top of the throat the second place is the oral cavity that's the space between the tongue and the roof of the mouth known as al jawf we then have the nasal cavity i.e. the air passage in your nose going to the back towards your throat. This is known as al khayshum We have the two lips known as ash and we have the tongue which is known as al A bit more detail about the mouth following on. Again we have the bottom of the throat, the middle of the throat and the very top of the throat. We'll study the top of the mouth. So right at the back of your mouth you have a very soft part of the back of the mouth known as the soft palate. Moving towards the middle of the mouth, the top roof of your mouth is known as the hard palate in the middle or the roof of the mouth. You also have, coming towards the front of the top of your mouth, the hard palate at the front roof of the mouth. We then have the very front of your hard palate, which some people will call the gums, where the hard palate meets the upper front teeth. And we have the gums at the bottom of your mouth, which meet with the front bottom teeth. So group 2, the letter FA is in group 2. So here we have the letter FA. Now when you pronounce the letter FA, your upper front teeth should touch the inner wet portion of your bottom lip. So say FA, FA. The next three letters which are in group 2 
so the same group as fa because it still has to do with the lips are meme ba and wow so when you say meme your front two lips come together however it's the outer dry portion of your lips that should be touching so say meme when you say ba your lips come together but it's the wet portion or the inner parts of your lips that actually touch so say ba and when you say wow wow you make a small circle with your lips and it's only the two outer right and left parts of your lips that are actually touching so say wow the next group of letters are all the throat letters so we'll start with two letters which originate right at the bottom of the throat so the letters are Hamza and the soft ha now Hamza in Arabic represents what we call the glottal stop now in English you have no letter to represent the glottal stop however if you were to say any letter beginning with one of the English vowel sounds so for instance the letter A if you say eight but say it very slowly eight you should feel that your throat blocks a tiny bit right at the beginning that's known as the glottal stop so in Arabic that's represented by the letter Hamza and that's why it's drawn right at the bottom of the throat and the small letter Ha which is a very soft Ha also originates from the bottom of your throat The next two in group three, i.e. the throat letters, is two letters which are at the middle of the throat, originate in the middle of the throat. This is the letter Ain and the letter Ha. So this Ha is what we call the forceful Ha because you're exhaling a bit more forcefully and that air is being pushed out from the middle of your throat. So again, Ain and ha. The next two letters in group three, i.e. we're still on the throat letters, is the top of the throat. So this is two letters, which is rain and ho. Rain and ho. And you'll notice that your tongue doesn't actually touch the back of the top of your mouth but it's really a sound taking place right at the top of your throat group four then is when we do move into where the tongue is being involved so what we've got here is two letters pronounced where the back of the tongue is touching the soft palate which is the top part of the very back of your mouth now there are two letters which are operating slightly differently so we have qaf and kaf so when you say qaf the back of your tongue effectively touch the very back of the soft palate and blocks the air before you release the sound so it's qaf qaf whereas